Hey folks, how's it going? We're checking out more Red Dwarf. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. Man, really enjoyed the last episode. I thought it was fantastic, man. It's, it's up there with, I think it's Better Than Life, Future Echoes. Uh, it wasn't Body Swap, was it? Yeah, Body Swap was pretty good too. That was the Dimensional Switch. I think it was Dimensional Switch. It's when they first met Ace Rimmer. That was a really good episode. I can't remember what the episode was called with Dwayne Dibley. That was a pretty funny episode. There's so many good ones, but I have like a list of like 10 that I always remember, or at least I remember, I can recall what happened in them. Only some of them I can remember the titles of the episodes, so excuse me. Oh, in the quarantine episode, man. What was that? <laughs> what was that Penguin call? Oh, crap. What was that Mr. Flipple? That was great as well. There's a lot of good episodes in the show. And the previous episodes going on that list, man, making it about 11 of my favorite episodes. I enjoyed the show in general, but there are just some episodes that just... I don't know. They just they just stand so far above it, man. Where the, the story was just fantastic. It was funny. The whole shebang. I can't remember the episode where everything was in reverse when they went to that alternative universe. That was an entertaining episode as well. So, excuse me if I mispronounce her name, but I think it's pronounced Geraldine, the lady who plays Cassandra. Um, I was told she passed away, but also she picked up this role because her, I think her grandson really loved the show. And that's the only reason why she took on the role. She wasn't even a big fan of the show, which is very awesome, man. So yeah, man, looking forward to seeing what happens in this episode. Really enjoyed the previous one. Let's just go ahead and jump into it, folks, and we will talk about it. The post arrived. Brilliant. Bit of excitement at last. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> it just clicked. Oh man, my brain is slow. I think it was those beans. Oh, the mail. I haven't a chance to look. Anything from my mates? Don't think so. There's nothing here in orange crayon with half the letters backwards. <laughs> Anything for you? Just the usual. Couple of death threats. <laughs> And I'm in the Reader's Digest Lucky Dip. <laughs> Apparently, I'm one of the special few selected for their Lucky Dip. That'll be you and the 12 zillion people then, will he? I've won either a holiday in Mauritius, a soft top sports car, or a fabulous matching set of egg cups. <laughs> Scrape with a coin to discover which. You can those egg cups, son. I've won the holiday! Oh, no way. Well, now he can go. Three million years into deep space where I can't claim it. <laughs> if I go and win a smegging holiday in Mauritius. Oh, they're taking the smeg. What now? I've won the lottery as well. Oh, no. <laughs> How terrible to would that be? To your check, simply bring your winning ticket to Lottery House, 24 Argyle Street. Four million! <laughs> No luck, it's my problem. No luck at all. I don't know what it's like being classified as a woman, sir. The humiliation. I know, I know. I mean, why should I, a Series 4000 mechanoid, have to endure the turgid monotony of showering with the girls? <laughs> Three times a week. Tell me that. It's not fair, I know. It's just that... <laughs> you shower with the girls? Oh. So hideously dull, I can't describe it. <laughs> As they stand around soaping themselves, their bodies all wet and foamy. <laughs> this is a hard up. Can you imagine it? <laughs> oh my goodness, we've been frozen in time again. Extraordinary. It must be a warp in the time-space continuum. How curious it isn't affecting me. We're not frozen in time, Crazy. We were just thinking about what you were saying. <laughs> no. It's times like this that make me thankful I'm just ahead. <laughs> I have a date with Miss Patricia Carling from Supplies on Saturday night. She thinks my eyes are my loveliest feature. If I go like this, I'm only half lovely! Guys, I'm waiting yet. returned within 30 seconds, all canary privileges suspended. One month. I know who stole your left peeper, sir. It was him, sir. I saw him playing marbles with it this morning, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Rimmer. Have you gone 
first. Yeah, he's gonna stab you, dude. You don't rat on other inmates. It's an unwritten law. Look, if it helps the appeal, what else matters? Model prisoners? <laughs> <laughs> he lucky don't have shanks. <laughs> Good evening. Tonight's scheduled feature has been cancelled and replaced by a special live pay-per-view event brought to you courtesy of Karate TV. <laughs> Transmitting live via my optical receptors, we bring you live and live women's shower night. Oh no. Wait, this is a joke, right? This is a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, mama! You know what this means, don't you? There is a god? <laughs> they got to him. They reprogrammed Crichton. <laughs> if we get caught watching this, your appeal's dead in the water. Forget the appeal. I already have! <laughs> what about Chris? She's never gonna believe I wasn't involved in this. We've got to stop it. You're right. I want no part of this. Me neither. We've got to go. Right now. <laughs> Not a minute to lose. I'm dust. Me too. <laughs> After two. One, two, go! <laughs> I'm full stuck. <laughs> Why do you want to watch this with a bunch of dudes anyway? And now, I'm going to stare at a cracked floor tile. <laughs> What's he doing that for? Remember, Shower Night is a pay-per-view event. <laughs> a waterproof pogo stick. <laughs> this is got to stop. But the pogo stick could put the ratings through the roof, sir. <laughs> Think of the money. Think of the show. <laughs> uh, <stiff. laughs> Easy about it. I'm not going to let you do this. It replaced the Wednesday night movie. I saw the whole thing. All three terrible hours of it. <laughs> that the time? Long ass hour. I've got a merchandising meeting in two minutes. <laughs> Excuse me. You are dead, nickel hydrate breath. And you? What have I done? You were there for three hours of it. Yeah, but I didn't enjoy it. I was outraged. Why do you think I only had one chalk ice? <laughs> How could you go along with this? I'm only human. You were completely naked, stark as nude, in the buff, totally kitless, no clothes on. You've seen me with no clothes on when we went out. Yeah, but I wanted to see if anything had changed. Why didn't you just ask instead of filming me in secret? Because you'd have said no. Not necessarily. If I'd known it meant that much to you, that you needed to see me naked so badly, I wouldn't necessarily have said no. Um, <laughs> I don't believe yeah. We're friends, aren't we? You know how hard it is getting this stuff. I had to nick this from the bakery. She'll appreciate that. I can just see her reading the card. Dear Chris, I'm really sorry for ogling you and the girls in the shower yesterday for three gobsmacking hours of steamy fun. <laughs> <laughs> to make up for it, and to indicate how truly sorry I am, here's two bags of self-raising. Something I didn't need any help with yesterday. <laughs> it's easy for you. You're not crazy about it. Half eaten onion sandwich. That's always a passion killer. <laughs> Is it? I like those. <laughs> then there's this Morris Dancer Monthly. <laughs> what a total Dweebo Nerdmeister will look with those. They're mine. <laughs> <laughs> It will be his. Tragically unfashionable underpants. No. They're mine. <laughs> in rocking the tiny whiteies. Christian rock music. If that doesn't scare her off, nothing will. <laughs> Have you been going through my things? <laughs> I'm not forgetting. Oh, no. <laughs> hey bro, why don't you give it to me? Right, come here a minute. I was just
trying to boost the rating, sir. Get him. Give him back to the tank. It was nothing personal. <laughs> your appeal has been successful. From this day forth, all inmates with no records of violence or depression will be allowed to have strings on their guitars. Oh, no. This appeal was all about guitar strings. You didn't think it was about getting out of here, did you? Bro. <laughs> you mean to say I've been busting my balls so you can have strings on your lousy, stinking guitar? You've been a brick, man. <laughs> and as a personal thank you... I'll we'll kill that dude. I thought I'd write you a song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool thing, dude. All right, man. I'm be honest, this kind of just felt like a filler episode, you know, just to kind of, like, move on to the next point. Red Dwarf in general is a comedy, so I try not to, like, you know, ask many questions, even though it always freaking happens. I'm wondering who reprogrammed Crichton. Was it that crazy guy? What's his name? Uh, Chaotic Jim or something. I don't remember his name. The guy with the crazy eyes who hit his head when he was walking into the room in the previous episode, and the one who said the tentacle thing ran away from him. I wonder if he reprogrammed because he wanted to see the shower thing so much because he just screwed the whole appeal thing, you know? Honestly, the majority of the funny moments that came from this were, like, the banter between Rimmer and uh, Lister. Also, watching this, I kind of saw this as an opportunity for Crichton and Kachansky to kind of, like, build a relationship or something because he doesn't like her. He doesn't want Lister to get with her and all that shebang, especially in Season 7. He made that completely clear. So by him being locked up with her, I thought they were going to build some type of bond. That's why I thought it was gone, but they barely touched base on it, just that he was forced to shower with the women and paint his toes and all that jazz. You know, then he becomes, gets reprogrammed and becomes like a voyeur cam for a bunch of perverts, which is one thing, like, first of all, cold-blooded. <laughs> Lister's kind of cold-blooded. That is his, his friend. At the end of the day, like, if you're not going to stand up for all the chicks who are being exploited, you would think he'd be like, man, I don't want all these guys to see my, the girl I'm in love with completely naked. But I guess <laughs> not getting booty for a long time can change a man. So I chuck it up to just being locked up in prison for a long time and Lister being millions of years old and not getting any booty. I chuck it up to that. You get, he gets a small pass where the horny and the primal instinct kind of overrode everything. And when the movie switched over, I'm guessing the guys probably paid the guards off. Like, you know what happens in prisons where, like, they'll pay a guard off so they can go beat somebody up or something like that. I'm guessing that's the case and why they let the movie keep playing. Uh, when it was, like, overrode by that, uh, when they were watching that Alien B film or whatever, I'm guessing they paid the guards off or something. That's why they're able to have, like, three hours of a nude shower. And who takes a three-hour shower? <laughs> And even if they're swapping, like, all right, this set of women go in for 20 minutes. All right, this set of women go in for 20 minutes. Like, why did I like, cry to stay in there that long, you know? Uh, especially because the other times he was in there, he was, like, reading a book and under an umbrella. And now he's, like, looking up butt cracks and shit. <laughs> like, yeah. Ugh, what's going on here? They're like, bro, get back over to your corner. Oh, no. But, yeah, man, this is this was goofy. The opening scene with Lister and Rimmer was pretty good. I was pretty late to that whole post joke when he had was carrying a will post. Like, Jesus Christ, my brain's delayed. What's going on here? Of course, the really simple guys are horny kind of thing. That was really basic jokes, but I still got a laugh out of me. The dudes crossing their legs and stuff. Other three guys sitting there, I guess, kind of oblivious to what's going on. There are, like, three other guys there before I went to, to, like, the back, like, women's crew or whatever. At least they look like guys. I could be wrong. So this entire time, he was never reprogrammed by the girls. I'm guessing he was still kicked out, because I'm guessing Kachansky went and told all the chicks that like he was recording them. So he's probably kicked out for real, but he wasn't reprogrammed for real. So how long is he going to be doing this whole Cry TV thing? This Crydy, Crydy TV thing? Uh, I wonder how long that's going to go on. If they're just going to just gloss over it in the next episode, and he just reprogrammed later on or something. Um, or maybe they're going to catch up with the beat him up and reprogram Rimmer and Lister, you know? So this is an okay episode, man. Especially compared to the previous episode, the Cassandra episode, which was fantastic. This falls very short. Very, very short, dude. Every show needs filler episodes. It is what it is, man. This is just one of those fillers. This happens with every show. Oh, and also, I can't believe this dude thinks that giving her... I get the whole flower joke, but I can't believe this dude actually thinks doing that is going to make up for him allowing it to go ahead. Don't get me wrong, it's not like he had a ton of power because most likely the guards and stuff are paid off. So what could he have done to prevent her from being seen? Because they're they're moving on to her next. The most he, I guess he could have done was 
ask the guards to let him out of the room so he can run to the lady shower room. But how many guards are going to come across on the way there to scream in there and tell Kachansky that, hey, they're, you're on camera or something? Like, I don't really know what he could have done because I'm pretty sure there are a ton of obstacles in his way. Because if it was that easy to run over to the women's area and get into the shower to prevent something, guys would be over in the area all the time trying to sleep with the women. So I'm pretty sure there's a ton of obstacles. So I'm not sure exactly what he could have done to prevent it. But he still, like, you know, watched it. So he played himself. And for three hours of that, played himself. So who knows if chance he's going to forgive him for that as well. I have talked long enough. This was an all right episode, man. It was definitely a filler episode. If I was, like, watching the show over, this probably be one of those episodes that I, I would skip. But it definitely felt like a filler episode for sure. But every show has those, so what can you do? Especially compared to the previous episode, the Cassandra episode, which was fantastic. This one definitely falls short. Either way, man, I am looking forward to the next one. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. Hopefully you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. I'll see you in the next one. Later.